Good to know you're still with us today in history. It's one up for conversation. Um, today, on um, December 28, 1895, we had the first commercial movie screened. Yes, indeed. It took place today at the Grand Café in Paris. The film was made by Louis and Auguste Lumiere, two French brothers who developed a camera projector called Cinematography. The Lumiere brothers unveiled the invention to the public in March 1895 with a brief film showing workers leaving the Lumiere factory. On December 28, the entrepreneur siblings screened a series of short scenes from everyday French life and charged admission for the first time. Movie technology has its roots in the early 1830s when Joseph Plateau of Belgium and Simon Stamfer of Austria simultaneously developed a device called the Fenakistoscope, which incorporated a spinning disc with slots through which a series of drawings could be viewed creating the effect of a single moving image. It is considered the precursor of modern uh, motion pictures. Uh, this was followed uh, by decades of advances until we got to this day in 1895. Now, uh, let me also mention that Thomas Edison and his assistant, um, William Dixon, developed the first motion picture camera called the Kine Tograph. I hope I got that one right. <laughs> uh, the next year, 1891, Edison invented um, that machine with a peephole viewer that allowed one person to watch a strip of film as it moved past uh, light. Now, that, the rest, as they say, is history. In America, the film industry quickly took off in 1896. Vitascope Hall, believed to be the first theater in the U.S. devoted to showing, to showing movies, opened in New Orleans. In 1909, the New York Times published its first film review, uh, that's of uh, D.W. Griffin's uh, Piper Passes. In 1911, the first Hollywood film studio opened, and in 1914, Charlie Chaplin made his big screen debut. That's uh, on this day in history, the things we take for granted. Yeah. Um, it was um, a marvel at the time it came around. For 1895. The I, I'm, can you just imagine? Things we take for granted. Uh, movies, uh, we go to watch them at theaters. When they shut down at theaters, we scream blue uh, murder. I mean. <laughs> murder and all of that. Uh, but that's just to give you a background on how, what what we've evolved to become, evolved to become when it comes to um, movies. Yes. All right. Um, also today in history, uh, after trying it on a rabbit in uh, 1959, um, that was the very first time that in vitro fertilization uh, was done in 1959. Um, and then in England in 1978, um, it was also very um, successful. Um, in 1981, today was the first time that um, in vitro fertilization was also done in America. Um, it basically is, you know, a lot of people have described it as a miracle for couples who have uh, suffered um, the struggle of, you know, childbirth, you know, for a woman who maybe has had a, a fallopian tubes uh, damaged over time. Um, there's still hope, you know, of, uh, you know, giving birth to a child. And it really is uh, the process of fertilizing an egg um, outside a woman's body and then eventually implanting the developing um, embryo in the womb for it to grow. Um, it's a very expensive uh, process. You know, I, I did a little reading yesterday. I know, I know a family friend who um, had um, triplets through IVF, um, IVF yes. Um, a very, very lucky. After about 10 years of, of marriage um, without um, a child. So That's first time it was done. Yeah. Um, in uh, 1981 was today, December 28th, in the U.S. Um, as with every uh, invention, 
there is always people who criticize it. Yes, they don't I read that see also. it. And uh, some of the criticism for the IVF was that people were trying to play God and decide who comes and who goes. Yes. You know, considering where we are at, some of the prominent people at that time uh, that uh, condemned the IVF was a Reverend Jerry Fowell. Uh, they all said it, they have a moral majority that we shouldn't be playing God. Yes when it comes to uh, you know children. But when you look at it and you see the success that has come from it, many couples who are struggling are able to have children that yes. are biologically theirs, and that's the whole point. So you don't lose that genetic connection with yes. those that are finicky the, about the, it. The Roman Catholic Church condemned it also. Oh, you yes. know, just, you know, they, and, and they, the way they described it, it was, um, it, sep it said it separates uh, the idea of marital sex from uh, conception or the act of conception. Um, which, well, was their perspective, you know, but since, you know, 2012, for example, uh, they've been close to, or as of 2012, they've been close to 5 million conceptions, successful conceptions through IVF. Um, I don't know if to agree with them, you know, because IVF doesn't necessarily mean that you're making a baby from you know, chemicals. <laughs> it is still the same. But the good take thing the sperm, about the test tube the babies egg. are thriving and they've had their yes. own natural births. Let me give you a bit of a, a background on that. Uh, the first couple um, was uh, Elizabeth Jordan Carr. Yes. Doctors carried out the first uh, successful um, intro viral. Uh, fertilization on a rabbit, as uh, he rightfully said. On July 25, 1978, uh, Louis Joy Brown, the world's first baby to be conceived via IVF, was born at a district hospital in England. The healthy baby was delivered shortly before midnight by cesarean section. In May 1999, Natalie became the first IVF baby to give birth to a child of her own naturally. And that's uh, nice. Yes. In December 2006, so we're not thinking it's, it's gone too far, Louis Brown, the original test tube baby, that's the baby that um, uh, had all the noise made at birth, also gave birth to a boy conceived and birthed naturally. Uh, one of the doctors responsible for the pioneering fit, that's uh, Dr. Robert Edwards, was awarded the Nobel Prize in 2010. Congratulations to him. Congratulations yes. to him. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's been an evolution that is welcomed by a whole lot of couples. The, the idea behind science and research either medical or engineering research is to make our lives better, better. is to solve the problems that um, we've for the longest time struggled with you know if you look at the research you know in healthcare that has helped us to survive things as small as yellow fever and measles and malaria that used to kill people like a plague you know but in the 17th century and all of that it was continuous research you know that you know led us to where we are today and so it's about the same thing with parents and with the couples who have struggled with childbirth, you know. Well, it's, woman... it's, it's pretty amazing, though. If you, if you consider the, um, um, the criticism against IVF and how far it has come since then, it's yes. almost like a normal thing now. You don't think too much about it. Though, like you said, it's pretty expensive It's pretty expensive, expensive you know, at, at least you know, about 3 million naira, you know, and above. The, the uh, uh, medication, you know, is as ex almost as expensive as the process and itself. It can, it can, the process can also be hard breaking yes. because you can try and you don't succeed you have to be patient until you get successful so um that was what happened today in history the pioneering science that came about giving us the gift of children for couples who have challenges with fertility all right um and remember this happened in 1981 first time in, in america in u.s it, in the uk rather it took place first in 1978 the very first time it was tried and was successful was in 1959 on a rabbit that's what we have for you today in history. We are moving straight into another conversation now. And uh, we are going to be talking next about uh, the, the Keto fire. Market Fire. 
and mm -hmm. how you can stay safe. What government regulations need to come into play in Nigeria that would protect um, citizens from fires? Um, the Hamatan, you know, may not be here, you know, fully yet, but it's still important that we have a conversation with Lasima about how we can be better protected from fires. Stay with us. Still here on The Breakfast. We'll be back.